Uh, we've invited Dr. Phil Jamison to come preach with us. He's preaching as a preacher today. Uh, he has been a preacher in a local church and uh, a teacher at a uh, seminary and uh, has done a lot of work in stewardship, but any preacher who preaches uh, in a church can't preach on stewardship every day. And uh, he's uh, here to just give us a word out of his heart, um, and I believe it's on prayer, as you'll notice. This afternoon at 3 o'clock, we will have a workshop where some of his other acquired uh, uh, learnings uh, will be applied to some of us and many of us who want to look at these years ahead of us and include in our uh, faithful witness to our Lord uh, different ways in which uh, we can uh, provide uh, for the Lord's work even after uh, we've gone on to be with the Lord. And many of you have some interest in just learning a little bit about some of uh, those things with the attitude. But that will happen all this afternoon at 3 o'clock. So, uh, Dr. Phil, thank you so much. I don't know how often you're called Dr. Phil. Well, I, uh, <laughs> not, not as often as I used to be, so that's... Uh, <laughs> it is a joy and pleasure to be with you today. It's, it's, always, it's always a privilege to be able to... Uh, to bring the good news of Jesus Christ. And so I thank you for that opportunity to, to share with you today. And as Jay said, yeah, even though I spend most of my time talking about money in the church, you'll probably please know I'm not going to do that this morning. So this afternoon, please come back for more of that, though, please. Um, our scripture lesson for this morning comes from the 11th chapter of Luke's Gospel. Uh, be reading verses 1 through 13. And he was praying in a certain place, and when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, then when you pray, say this, things we've just said, Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Don't bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I give him anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, Yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who knocks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then... Who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will the heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who seek him this is the word of lord for us brothers and sisters there's a story that's told about a teenager who had decided to quit high school he said that he was just fed up with it all but his father tried to convince him to stay with it sonny said you just can't quit all the people who are remembered in history didn't quit. George Washington, he didn't quit. Abraham Lincoln, he didn't quit. Thomas Edison, he didn't quit. Elmo McCringle, who the son butted in? Elmo McCringle, you know why you don't remember him? He quit. <laughs> I suppose most of us, most of our lives have heard stories about the importance of not giving up. Politicians, sports figures, teachers, and parents all preach the virtue of persistence. Our gospel lesson this morning also has a great deal to say about that, and we would do well to consider it. Well, we are in a, a large company of disciples from the very beginning who have needed the Lord to teach us how to pray. And it seems like some of us still don't quite have it figured out, but here we are. And the Lord is good, so when we say teach us to pray, he is always willing to do so. And that's what Jesus does in this passage from Luke. These first 13 vo verses can be divided into two sections. Section 1, verses 2 through 4, is the what we pray. And of course, we do that once, we did that just once again a few moments ago when we said the Lord's Prayer. 
we joined our voices with Christians throughout the ages and all over the world who've been praying these glorious words that our Lord ourself has given him. It's Jesus' prayer. It's Jesus' prayer that he shares with us, and he encourages us to pray his prayer. The what we pray praises to God and petitions for our daily sustenance, a spirit of forgiveness, and to be protected from evil. The what that we pray. Many, many sermons can be and are preached about that, the importance of the what. But today, I want us to turn our attention to the second part of our scripture for this morning, and that is verses 5 and following. And this is now not the what we pray, but the how we pray. So today, we're going to take just a little bit of time to look at our need for persistence in prayer. The section begins with what really is kind of a rather humorous parable about waking up one's neighbors late at night. Now, it probably doesn't sound quite so funny if that were to happen to you, but there is a little bit of humor associated with this. Before you say that being woken up at midnight is not what you'd be looking for, let's listen. In the Middle Eastern culture that Jesus is, of course, a part of and is addressing here, this would not really have been of an outrageous appeal to make for several reasons. First, in a village, there often was a common oven which families would take turns with. Everyone in the village would know who had the fresh bread because they would have had the oven at that point. And so it wasn't just that he was going around from door to door knocking, hoping someone might be might have some bread. He would have known which household to go to. The second reason involves this culture's notion of hospitality, why this would not be really such an unusual thing that someone would come at midnight to ask for bread. It wasn't unusual for folks to show up late at night. People tended to travel at night because it was too hot to do so during the day. And if a guest arrived at your door, it would be absolutely shameful to not offer them something to eat. And not just leftovers either. A fresh loaf of bread needed to be given. It's always an honor to have someone come to you. And, not, and so you couldn't just throw a bunch of things together. It had to be something special and good. And remember also that bread wasn't just what you ate. It was also your knife and your fork and your spoon. And if you've ever eaten at a Middle Eastern restaurant, you know that to be the case. Or having some uh, bread dipped in hummus. This was also what you used to eat with. So the bread was essential. And if you didn't have it, you were out of luck. The final thing that we need to understand here is that if a guest were to go unserved in this time and place, shame is brought not only upon the entertaining family, but the entire village. The entire village would have seen to have failed if one person was not able to deliver hospitality. So you see what would have struck the first hearers of the peril, the first people listening to Jesus, wasn't the audacity of somebody coming and knocking on the door saying, I need some bread. What would have sounded funny and crazy was the fellow inside saying, I can't be bothered. That's what would have been unusual, that he would have the audacity to send the man away who had come asking in very reasonable terms for something essential, not just for himself, but for the sake of the entire community. So maybe now we can start to get a little clearer understanding of the meaning here. And I think this is what Jesus intends us to get from this. If a person who offers a lot of poor excuses against exercising what is his mandatory duty to do as a neighbor, if such a person will eventually give in and help the man, how much more so than would God, the Heavenly Father, come to the aid of his children who seek his help? If one can trust a rather lazy neighbor who can't be bothered to do the very bare minimum of his duty, how much more can you and I trust the great God of love who has made himself known to us in Jesus Christ? So the how of prayer is simply this. Keep on praying. How? Just keep on praying. The present tenses of verse 9 are perhaps better translated in this way. Keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and it will be opened unto you. Now, it's right here that I think we must be very careful because I told you this parable is about persistence, and it certainly does involve our persistence. 
we are reminded by Jesus not to too quickly give up in our pursuit of the good. This is a good reminder because there certainly are times when our prayers are meager and half-hearted. I guess I shouldn't speak for you, but I do speak for myself when I say that. There are times when we may mouth a quick prayer about something, but never bring it back to God again. Or maybe you've told somebody, I'll pray for you, and then you forget. We simply return to our regular routine of trying to be self-sufficient. We say a quick prayer and then it's back to us doing all of the work we think we need to do. Trying to live life so often on our own terms. So many of us need to be reminded to keep on praying about both the big situations but also the little situations in our lives. Everything should be brought persistently in prayer to our Lord. But there's another side to all this which must not be forgotten either. Answered prayer doesn't come merely by persistence. You're not necessarily going to win the lottery because you pray night and day to do so. But of much greater importance than all the goofy things for which we might persistently pray, the most important thing is this. we might persistently pray, are the good things which from time to time apparently aren't giving to us even when we persistently pray. What I mean by that? It's simply this. I would be very, very surprised indeed if some of you here today maybe have prayed for years for very good and important things. As long as you can remember, perhaps you've been praying for these things. Maybe it's the healing of somebody that you love. Maybe it's the restoration of a broken relationship. Maybe it's the salvation of a friend or a family member. You've asked time and time again. Maybe you've prayed until you're hoarse. You've sought until you're bone tired. You've knocked on heaven's door until it seems like your knuckles have bled and yet no answer seems to come. Well, if that is you or you know somebody like that, then listen carefully. Our persistence in prayer is important, but the accent can never be on our persistence alone. Instead, you and I are called to trust the persistent love of the God who hears our prayers. Our persistence is important, but our persistence can only be grounded in our belief that God persistently persistently pursues us and persistently loves us and persistently never gives up on us. Our persistence in prayer can only be based in our belief in God's persistent love for us. Listen again to verse 13. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. If you and I love the people dependent upon us and we're praying for them, how much more does the Father in heaven love his children, which is you and me? Let me tell you an old story. In a far country there lived a band of minstrels who traveled from town to town playing their music. But times were hard and there was very little money for the common folk to hear them perform, even though the fees were very small. Attendance kept falling off. So early one evening, the group met to discuss their plight. One of them startled. One of them started, I see no reason for opening tonight. And to make things worse, it's starting to snow. Who is going to travel out on a night like this just to hear us play? Another joined in, I agree. Last night we performed for just a handful of people. Fewer are going to come tonight. Why not give back the few fees that we've collected and just not bother this evening? Besides, how can you play your best for so few? And then they turned to their leader. Well, what do you think? And he responded, listen, I know you're discouraged. I am too. But we have a responsibility for those, to those who came. We will go on and we will do the best job for those who come. The few should not be punished with an inferior performance. Well, heartened by his words and encouraged by what the leader said to them, the minstrels performed. And they really never did play better. 
When the show was over and the very small audience was gone, the leader called the troops before him. In his hand was a note, handed to him by one of the audience just before the doors closed behind him. In a trembling voice, he said, Listen to this, my friends. And then he slowly began to read the note. Thank you for a beautiful performance. And it was signed very simply, Your King. As much as I wish I did, I don't really know why the prayers of good people aren't always answered or answered in the way that we want them to be. But I do know this. Someday all of us, all of God's children, will stand in the presence of their Heavenly Father who is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. So brothers and sisters, don't give up. We know the end of all of this. It's to be with the one who loves us and will be able to explain all things to us. He asks us to never give up, to never lose heart, even when things don't seem to be going as well as we want them to be or need them to be. The Lord loves you. Never forget that. Our persistence, our, our, our keeping on going is only possible because of what the Lord is doing for us each and every day. So be encouraged, brothers and sisters, and never, never stop praying. Amen.